This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, and welcome to worship at Tewksbury Congregational Church on this beautiful July morning. We welcome back Reverend Baxter from his vacation with his family. We're happy that he was joining us again. Um, In-person in -person worship is going strong. Please come and join us. Masks are still required for now, but we are able to sing. Please join us for movie night in the garden on July 22nd, um, I believe at 7.30, and more information to follow on that. Missions is working with Church World Services to fill school bags for children in the fall. Please sign up on the church website. If you are interested in reading scripture, please call the office or reach out to myself or any one of the deacons and let us know. We're happy to have more people reading scripture. And please put your prayers and celebrations in on the Facebook page so that I can read them later on in the service. And now let us be in the spirit of worship. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Lord be with you. And also with you. It's good to see you all. Uh, I did plan to come back after three weeks, so it's good to be back home. When we got back home after that long drive, we felt like we were on vacation sitting on the couch. <laughs> Would you stand with me and join, join me in our call to worship? Please stand. The earth is God's and everything in it. Lift up your voices in praise and thanksgiving. Amen. Sixty-nine. God of grace and God of glory.
great joy on this Sunday morning. Let us all join in prayer. God of grace and glory, renew us with your presence this day as we gather to bless your name and sing your praise. Bless us with your glorious love and your guiding light. Strengthen us each and every hour through the power of your Holy Spirit and the wisdom of your Holy Word. In hope and joy, we also pray the prayer Jesus taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
scripture reading today is from Ephesians 1, chapters 3 to 14. But first, let us pray. God who saves is amongst us now, filling our lives with grace, forgiving us and making us one, perfecting all of creation through the mercy of God's steadfast love. Thank you for your presence, helping us understand today. Amen. So Ephesians 1, 3 to 14. Bless the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing that comes from heaven. God chose us in Christ to be holy and blameless in God's presence before the creation of the world. God destined us to be his adopted children through Jesus Christ because of his love. This was according to his goodwill and plan and to honor his glorious grace that he has given to us freely through the son whom he loves. We have been ransomed through his son's blood and we have forgiveness for our failures based on his overflowing grace, which he poured over us with wisdom and understanding. God revealed his hidden design to us, which is according to his good will and the plan that he intended to accomplish through his son. This is what God planned for the climax of all times, to bring all things together in Christ, the things in heaven along with the things on earth. We have also received an inheritance in Christ. We were destined by the plan of God who accomplishes everything according to his design. We are called to be an honor to God's glory because we were the first to hope in Christ. You too heard the word of truth in Christ, which is the good news of your salvation. You were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit because you believed in Christ. The Holy Spirit is the down payment on our inheritance, which is applied toward our redemption as God's own people, resulting in the honor of God's glory. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning once more. How are you doing, church? Good again to see your beautiful smiles on this Sunday morning. Uh, I kind of wore that joke out, haven't I? Uh, do we have any uh, scrapbookers in the audience today? Nathan, you're, you're a scrapbooker. I didn't see any other hands out there. Wow, you're, you're like me. You know, I'm a big Ancestry.com uh, buff. Does anybody do Ancestry.com? Really? You just don't care about your family history, do you? <laughs> you just don't care. I, I think it's wonderful. I spent hours upon hours on Ancestry.com researching uh, my ancestors all the way back. I was able to go one line back a thousand years, a thousand year, years to back to... Italy have you been there and yes I got a hand this morning and uh, I learned uh, I, I learned a lot of stuff about my family I, I learned uh, things that they did I, I saw scrapbooking I, I saw articles I, I saw marriage licenses I, I saw a bunch of stuff and, and I'm glad ancestry.com did that for me because I'm not one to make one of those old-timey scrapbooks where you're cutting out newspaper articles and pictures like that I like all my stuff uh, stored digitally. You know, I'm a, I'm a modern guy. And uh, did you know Ancestry.com, it, it will create a, a, scrap, a real scrapbook for you, a book. And if you're cheap, it will create a poster for you that you can put on your wall. <laughs> so for you cost-effective people out there, you have all these options. But I want to go back to this uh, scrapbook. Did you know that you're in God's scrapbook? God has put an image of you in there. God keeps up with your life. God wants the best for you. Uh, you may remember uh, this thing we put on our sign. Our, our sign's real popular, isn't it? Debbie, you keep on asking me what to put up there. I, I don't want that pressure, okay? And, and it, basically it says that your picture is on God's fridge. Remember that one, Mike? You know, uh, there's other ways to understand this passage. Uh, in the New Revised Standard Version, it, it says that we have been, with God, we have been thought of by God uh, through the foundation of time. Foundation. Say foundation. That sounds like the beginning, right? And we know from the book of John, chapter 1, that, that Jesus was there in the foundation, the light of God. How special is, it, is this? 
And, and, and we, were, we were destined to be God's children. Say destined. You know, uh, uh, God chose us for the scrapbook. Could you imagine God, the, the proud, the proud uh, parent, wherever God is this time? God, God can be wherever, right? God is everywhere or where God wants to be. Uh, reading through that scrapbook, looking at the pictures of his chosen children, the love, the example that we were given in Jesus Christ. Say Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, right? Hey, let's act like it. Let's have joy every day because of that. Jesus chose us on the cross. Jesus chose us at the resurrection. Simply chose us. Say chose. C-H-O-S-E. Did I spell that right? Uh, I've been criticized lately, well, constructive criticism about my uh, use of uh, verb tense in words that people don't understand because of my southern accent. So, you know, I, I, I wanted to spell it for you chosen it's great to be chosen isn't it i remember when i was a child when i was playing backyard football or kickball or wiffle ball or baseball yes we were brave enough to do that you know that ball would come mighty fast and you'd have to duck if you didn't have a glove but if you were chosen first didn't that feel good maybe the middle of the pack it didn't feel as good but it was okay enough right but what if you were chosen last? That hurt, didn't it? It hurt. But does God do that? No. We are all chosen equally in God's love and grace. Say grace. You know, the, the, uh, the Apostle Paul, or, or uh, many feel today that Ephesians was written by a disciple of God that was trained by Paul, maybe heard his letters, maybe uh, experienced him uh, preaching and teaching in a church, but does it really matter? It doesn't really matter. Uh, it was written in a spirit of trying to understand God. Say understand. You're going to talk a lot today, people. <laughs> you know, understanding is a beautiful thing, and I want to say to you that trying to understand is divine. It's divine. And, and you know Paul from his call on Damascus Road to his ministry to where he was at the end of ministry in Rome, to his death, he was trying to figure out this divine grace that we had all been given. And we know from this passage, as he writes to the church in Ephesus, Ephesus would be in, well, the, the artifacts of this church and all that, you, we can find some of these in, in what we call Turkey today, the, the country of Turkey. He was writing to them, trying to describe this family that God had created. Say family. There's a fancier term for them. Say fancy. <laughs> the body of Christ. What and why was this body chosen by God? Paul was trying to figure it out, and that was divine. And when you try to figure it out, that's divine as well, isn't it? You're seeking, you're trying to understand. And, and Paul, uh, or those influenced by Paul, were trying to write about this, and they were trying to write, write about grace, and they were trying to describe the family that they were a part of and that we are a part of today. And how important is family? The good and the bad. We learn from the good, right? We learn from the bad. We learn from the in-between. And that affects and it shapes us. It shapes us throughout life. Some of that stuff we, we carry on and we want to practice. Some of it we want to forget, right? But it shapes us nonetheless. So here we are. We have, they, they have the teachings of Christ. And, and it's being spread or, orally. They, they didn't have it written down. You know, we had the epistles written down, but, but it would take a little bit longer to put the gospels, the, the four gospels together. And uh, we're learning about this family. And what it means, they, they would meet in homes, they would break bread together, they, they would sing, they would talk about God and what God had done for them. And do we do that here in our church? Say amen. Do we do that in, in our studies, in our discussions? Yes. Do we do, we do it in, our, in, in small groups if you're a part of that? Yes. And, and that's divine, and we're trying to figure it out. And we're trying to figure it out with our family. Say family. You know, can we do it alone? Can we do it alone? Jesus knew that. Jesus knew that we would need each other. 
And how I wish Christians today of all walks and understandings would understand that, understand that we need one another. And this passage from Ephesians is trying to describe that. These were diverse people that came from diverse backgrounds, and God brought them all together to be one family. I like that word, one. It's a simple number, right? It's a simple number. It's easy to understand, and it's definitely easy to count. You know, uh, God chose us. That's a beautiful thing. And through Christ and our understanding of Christ and the practice of our faith, we are given redemption. Redemption. There are many of you that grew up in the church. You were baptized as an infant and you grew up and you have felt God's presence in your life, right? All the way. But there have been times in your journey as you follow Christ, you needed some redemption. Would you agree with me on that? My toes are getting really, they're hurting right now. We all need redemption from time to time, from our thoughts, from our practice of ministry, from how we love our neighbor. Loving our neighbor should be easy, right? But is it? But is it? I was thinking of this story while I was visiting uh, friends and family in Alabama. Uh, at my first church, in the Methodist church, it's called a student pastor appointment, and they're scary. They're scary for the people because I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, it, it was scary for me because I was preaching to a flock for the first time, and, and we loved one another. But let me say this. After the three years of that, and I was ordained and this and that, uh, we were ready to move forward <laughs> because I was a student pastor, and, and uh, they knew that, and they helped prepare me. It, it was what it was meant to be. There was two gentlemen in that congregation. There was Billy and Hugh. Billy was a, as blue as you can do, go Democrat. Hugh was a red as you can go Republican. Whenever I'd go visit, uh, Billy would complain about those Republicans, and he would complain about those Democrats. And I'm like, can we talk about anything else? They lived next to one another. They argued over a foot of land on the boundaries of their property. They haggled all the time outside of the walls of the church. But guess what? When they came in and worshipped on that Sunday, they shared that love, they shared in study, they shared in being in worship. Wow, how novel is that? Sounds like family. Any of you ever disagree with your family? Any of you ever wanted to leave a family gathering? We've got to remember that God chooses all of us. And God puts together diverse people of different understandings, of different reasons, uh, of different practices of faith. Say practice. You know, uh, the writer of Ephesians, which I believe is the Apostle Paul, he was trying to describe this, what this family means, and he was trying to res uh, 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 describe redemption. And, and he was uh, just embracing the diversity of God's people. And isn't it, isn't it the beautiful world that we live in, the, the diversity ar around us that we can all uh, uh, just imagine being together, working as one, and how, how I pray for that? Because I know the church, we can do this because of the kingdom of God, can't we? That, that goes across all boundaries. And, and gosh, I just wish we would share that grace and love. And, 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 and these were people that did not feel redeemed. A lot of them felt judged. Uh, a lot of them just felt like on the outside looking in. And, and, they, 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 and, and Paul was saying that you are blessed and you are redeemed by God because you have been chosen since the foundation of time. That is cosmic grace. This is the whole universe that we know of, and we are a part of that creation. And Paul tries to say that we were chosen and redeemed all the way back then. That was a long time ago. Could you imagine? When you look at the beauty of creation and the universe around us, do you see God? And do you see that you're a part of it? And do you see that you are chosen as part of this cosmic reality? Walter Brueggemann talks about this. He's an Old Testament scholar. He's one of, he's one of our uh, UCC people that teaches. And he talks about the cosmic reality of the Old Testament and, and how God was always choosing us even in our failure. 
and ultimately for us followers of Christ. We were chosen in our covenant and our promise to follow Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Say, Lord. Say, Savior. We were chosen. We were redeemed. And being united. Being united. Does united mean that, that we all agree on everything? No. But we serve a common purpose in Jesus Christ as we follow. You know, I yearn for all of us to come together around the world and do just that. Be an example of that love and grace. To practice our faith in piety. Say piety. You know, Paul also talks about being holy and blameless. Holy. How are we doing with our holiness? Are you blameless? Okay. Maybe we need to consider this more. What is holiness? What is it to me, how, how I understand it? I just hope and pray that people see Christ through me. Do you want Christ to, to do you want uh, people to see Christ through you? I don't know if it's confined to habits, although those can hold us back. But I want to tell you something that confines us more is our thoughts about other people and where they should be placed. <laughs> you know, Jesus dealt with this, didn't he? Jesus was part of a caste system. He, come, he came from a family where Joseph was a carpenter. They were a little bit lower on the totem pole. So could you imagine when Jesus started to preach the gospel? They're like, that, you know, his, even his hometown was like saying, well, who, who is this guy? You know, he wasn't supposed to cross that boundary, but he did. And Jesus started building his scrout book. Say scrout book. Disciples, those early converts, those followers, those pre-resurrection and post-Pentecost. Do you see this scrout book that's going on and on and on? And we continue in that lineage. And may we always be united in one faith. I say united again. Uh, doesn't that sound wonderful? You know, I was reading uh, a few weeks ago while on vacation that in our country today, overall 47% of people say that they're affiliated with a church. And that's it. Did you hear that? What are we doing wrong? Are we sharing the love of Christ? Are we sharing that scrapbook of our history? Are we including people? Are we, be, are we being inclusive like Jesus Christ was when he died for us on the cross and was resurrected on that third day? As I heard in many of the African-American churches that I have visited, my, my, <laughs> my, my. When you hear that response, that means they're thinking. So are you thinking about this and what our family the body of Christ means here today. I want to close with this little thing called inheritance. Inheritance. Isn't that a beautiful word? Isn't that a beautiful word? How many of you have been called to say, hey, you've, you have inherited something? And you're just like, oh yeah. And then sometimes you found out and you're like, I don't know if I want that. <laughs> I got a call from a friend one day, and he said uh, his parents called him home. And they were older. Their time was going to be short. There was health problems. And they talked about inheritance. They talked about inheritance. They showed him where everything was. They showed him what they wanted to be done with it. And it was a hard conversation, wasn't it? You know, Paul was trying to figure out this inheritance and what it means. And did Jesus show those that followed the way? Did he adequately describe what this inheritance means? That we were all destined and chosen by God and what that means. Jesus showed us the way. We know that place. We may not see it, but we know it's near, maybe far away. He showed us this inheritance ultimately that we would all receive. 
I asked my friend, what are you going to do with this inheritance? You going to go on a nice vacation to the Caribbean as part of it? Are you going to maybe buy a new house? What are you going to do with this inheritance? He said, no, nah, I don't need it. I'm going to pass it on to my two daughters. Inheritance. You see how it works? We've inherited this grace from God. We were chosen to be part of this great family, the body of Christ. And we pass this inheritance on to future generations. We pass it on to our children, our grandchildren. For they are adopted by God as well. Don't we love that hymn, Pass It On? I'm not asking you to play it, Lucinda. I'm not. I would have told you beforehand. pass it on I, I like to think of inheritance it, it's more than money isn't it it's something that we pass on from generation to generation the ancient israelites they did this by sharing the stories of their god yahweh jesus came to show us who god is and what god wants for us and that beautiful covenant that god gives to us to be part of this beautiful and wonderful family. Inheritance. Doesn't that sound a little bit better than when it's bigger than how much money you got in your checking account? Because this inheritance that we receive from God is so much bigger than that. So may you practice the divine part of yourselves, a saint called to follow God and understanding this inheritance. So one day when glory to glory comes, <laughs> we will understand this beautiful grace that we have been given. In the name of the Father, Son, and what? Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Baxter. Let us continue to share our faith in Jesus by singing hymn number 442. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Please rise and sing with me.
Now we come to our time of prayer. Uh, Susanna, also, uh, please consider your prayer request to share. We have prayers for Finley, who's a friend's daughter who is having brain surgery on Tuesday to hopefully stop her seizures. Guide the doctor's hands and pray for minimal weakness after. Mac is asking for prayers for a favorable diagnosis for their dearest friend, Bruce. Marilyn is asking for prayers for her brother-in-law, Wayne. Pray that they find a way to ease his pain. Melissa is asking for prayers for her daughter, Haley, that she can become seizure-free, and also celebrating that she can attend a camp for children with epilepsy now that some of the COVID restrictions have been lifted. Continued prayers for the recovery efforts in Florida also. Are there any other prayer requests in the sanctuary? Yes. Kristen is asking for prayers for her friend Bridget, who we've been praying for. She still remains in the ICU and is still very weak. So we pray for continued healing for her. Anybody else? Yes. So Matt is asking for uh, prayers and celebration of a deep friendship for, say those names again. Bob, Liz, Christina, and Dave. Wonderful. Anybody else? Yes. Okay. My mother-in-law's uh, home church in Montgomery, Alabama, the Korean United Methodist Church, has given us a gift of $1,000 to use for our ministry here, so we're very thankful for that. Uh, they uh, want to support our missions, and uh, but we'll give them thanks with a nice letter real soon. How about that? Amen. So, uh, so thank God for that celebration. Let us be in prayer. Our great and wonderful God, full of mercy, full of love for us all, who gave his only begotten Son, who empowers us through the Holy Spirit. We thank you for this day and this time of prayer. Lord, we thank you for celebrations in our lives, maybe not lifted up here uh, by those, but we know that those here and those in the cloud have them in their heart to celebrate you to be part of this great family of God, not only here in this local church, but around the world as we seek to serve and follow you. Thank you for the grace of this family. Thank you for our celebration as we lift to you in our hearts. Thank you for the gift from the Korean United Methodist Church in Montgomery, Alabama. Thank you for the blessing they are to us and to their community. Lord, we thank you for all that we pray for this day, continuing prayers, new prayers, Lord, we pray that you intercede in the, in the lives of those that we pray for today, maybe to bring them justice, to bring them healing, to let them feel your grace and love. Help us as your family, the family of God, to be there for them in our prayers, but also in person, through our thoughts, uh, through our gifts to them, to share the blessedness that you have given to us. May we continue to be that blessing to our community to Tewksbury and beyond, to the United Church of Christ, whom we participate in and serve in with other churches here in the States and around the world. Lord, may we continue to be a beacon of hope to our community as we share the love and grace that Christ has given to us. Lord, we pray for things around our nation, for our neighbors that are having such a hard time in Miami, for those that were hurt by the Elsa storm. Uh, for all of those around the world that are experiencing strife. We pray for your grace and your name to reign in those regions. And may they feel that things can come to pass, that something new can happen, and that we can all experience resurrection because of the gift and blessedness you have given to us. Almighty God, we thank you for our offering today. May we continue to offer our lives to you. May our family reach out and share that grace through this offering of love that we are given to glorify you. We give it to you, O oh God, to say that we are your people. Help us to use it 
to share Christ with the world. Our prayers we lift to you this day in our great Savior's name, Jesus, and all God's people say. Amen. Whether by voice, violin, handbells, or any other form of music, this is one of my favorite hymns. Please rise and join me. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior what? Always. All right. When I hear a story, it sounds kind of like a scrape, uh, scrapbook, right? I just said scrape. A scrapbook. Are we going to build upon this the scrapbook of God? Are we going to build upon this story? Share that love and grace. You're part of the greatest family this world has ever known. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah and amen. Amen.